Hey everybody, and welcome to an APA tutorial video slash uh, Excel tutorial video. Uh, there are probably dime a dozen uh, tutorials on today's topic, but you know, I thought I'd give it a go uh, on my own and, and talk about the things that I like um, in Excel to do today's tutorial on scatter plots and lines of best fit in Excel. So here I have a set of data that uh, I am going to use to make a scatter plot. And uh, scatter plot is one of the more common chart types that Excel has. And you can see here that I have two continuous variables and uh, and they will go together nicely in a scatter plot. So how to do a scatter plot. So we're going to go to insert and um, we are going to go to recommended charts here and you can see that little this little image here is an XY plot so named by Excel and the folks at Microsoft but also says scatter so we're gonna click on that and you can there are a bunch of different kinds of scatter plots but we're just gonna go with the traditional kind of scatter plot where we're gonna plot an X value and a Y value and here it loads in a blank thing so we are going to go over here and select the data. So when the data source is open, you can also do this by highlighting the data first and, and then going to insert chart. But I'm going to go ahead and select all of this, all of this, as my data. As we scroll, 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 and here it's done. OK, and here you can see that it already can tell that there are two columns of values. And when you set up your data in Excel, generally speaking, reading uh, left to right, left to right, it will read one column as the X value, the one on the left and the one on the right will be read as the Y value. And so you can see here and then you can you can put in a name if you want to to change instead of it's being series one. But <clears throat> it's fine uh, down here. Hem hidden and empty cells you can either have gaps zero or connect data points with a line uh, because there are some empty cells in here. I'm just going to leave gaps for that. Um, and you can also check to show data in hidden rows and columns if they are part of your series, your data range at this point. And the cool thing about this is if you wanted to, you can add in multiple series. And so you, if you had a set of data points, so more than one set of X, Y values on the same scale, you can put them in the same in the same plot and that's what I that's what I've done with that's what I had done with my dissertation data uh, I had put them in uh, multiple I think it was three three different uh, three different series on the same graph and it's really nice if you want to make comparisons especially if they're on the same y variable unit of measurement so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here, and it put in all of these small little dots. I'm going to enlarge the chart here since I have all of this space, so you can see all of my little dots here. And uh, we have some elements that we are going to have to fix. So you can see here that the plot area has all of these grid lines on it. Well, I want to go ahead and take away some of those grid lines because sometimes grid lines get in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off primary horizontal to make it, you know, readable, and then primary vertical. And the only thing it leaves me with is the zero on the, this is milliseconds, and I'll go ahead and label that in a minute. It, it, it just leaves the zero mark along here so you can tell what's negative and what's positive. Okay, there are a couple of el other elements that I can get rid of here. Uh, I don't need the chart title, but I am going to need to modify some of these axes. So let's go ahead and modify the vertical axis here. And it'll bring up the axis options. And um, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and 
Um, instead of wor working on access options here and or text options, because you can do text fill and text outline, I don't really need that yet. What I want to do before I do anything is go over here and change the font size and the font. So I'm going to go with 14, so it's readable at most reading distances. And I'm going to change the font. Now, Calibri is fine because it's a sans serif font, but I kind of uh, like Arial for this and, and because it is also a basic sans serif font. Okay, so I have all of this. And the other things that I want to do is go over here. Um, now, you could change your minimums and maximums. Now, I have a data point right here, which is 18, uh, 18,000, 18 milliseconds, so 18 seconds. Um, <clears throat> I could change, you know, my maximum to 19 to squash it down a little bit more. And then over here, we have um, minus... 8,000, this is a change in timing, by the way, and that's why there's minus time here, because it means people got faster. Uh, minus 8 seconds here, and so I could change this if I really wanted to, but I think I'm going to go ahead and leave these auto uh, these auto bounds. Uh, I could change the major and minor axes. I think 5 seconds is fine. It makes sense. I could make that 2,500 and add a few more um, points for comparison. So if I click away from that one, uh, the minor unit now becomes 500. And you can see that here I have um, every two and a half seconds represented on the graph. So it, it makes it a little bit easier to read. And I'll go ahead and, and do that. And now with the other one that I want to do is I would like to um, add in my tick marks. And uh, generally speaking, I add them to the outside. And you can see just a bit. The tick marks are there. Now we could, if we really wanted to, make this line of the axis quite a bit pop, pop just a little bit more. So we can, we can instead of gray, which it is all right now, gray on white, we could actually make that black if we wanted to. And so it makes the axis itself uh, black and the tick marks themselves black. So if I click away from it, you can see that it gets click away from it you can see that it gets uh, more uh, distinguishable okay and that's all I will really do I can, I'll leave the letters as gray so they're not as stark contrast against the white background here and so I kind of want to do the same thing with my oops, double click on the uh, x-axis here so again we're gonna go to axis options uh, I will change the size of the font in just a, uh, just a little bit. But one of the things that you can do is you can change where the bound is. So you can see here that I have placed the numbers themselves of the y-axis below the rest of the graph, which means that the line for zero seconds, so no change in reaction time, uh, that stays where it stays, but then the axis itself, the, the, the data labels for the axis itself are below it, which means that they won't get in the way of any of the dots that I have here. And that's the reason why I chose this data is to illustrate that point a bit better. So we'll change that label position there. Um, and uh, you can go in and, and format if you want. Uh, I'm again... Uh, I am going to change something in the minimum and maximum. So what I want to uh, mention here is that 1.2 is not a val valid number on this scale. So I don't want it actually represented on this scale. So I want to shuffle it down to 1.0. Okay, so that's... And, and by doing that, by uh, spreading this range out I was able to which is something that I was going to do but now I don't need to is I was going to make it every 0.1 on the major unit scale but now I don't have to because it uh, it's there now th if this did not have a uh, you know span a m plus and minus a zero to have the axis there I would prob I would most definitely put in um, uh, tick marks here but because they are 
where they are, I don't know if the tick marks actually look all that good. So, I mean, and outside is technically still inside the graph area, so, you know, it doesn't really make much sense. So that is, that is an option. I would, I would leave it to you to do that. But the other thing that I want to do is I want to go to line, and I want to also change it to black so it's a little bit starker against the grain. And then the last thing I'm going to do, which was the first thing I did for the other one, is I'm going to change the font to Arial. And again, I'm going to change it to 14. Now, it shifted the scale up, and that's because um, these, these numbers got bigger. And you can see the tick marks themselves got bigger as well. Now, uh, I'm sure there might be a question about, like, okay, well, what if I don't want the numbers to be uh, gray and I want them to be black? Well, that's where you go to this font color changing, and you can see that it's this color selected here. You can change them to black if you wanted them to be more stark. And if I double click on that, same thing here is because I just used it, I can do it there as well. And so there are my axes set up, but it's missing something very important uh, in the uh, grand scheme of things. So if I go to chart design, go back to chart design, and I go to chart element, I am going to need to use my axes title. So I'm going to go ahead and do primary horizontal. And again, um, this is a default size and um, font, so I will have to change that. So here I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to call it accuracy for now because, I mean, it's this is just a tutorial, of course. It doesn't have to be completely descriptive. And so I wrote in accuracy there, and now I'm going to change the font and everything. So again, I'm going to go to Arial and change it to Arial, and I'm going to go to 14 and make it 14. And uh, I am also going to make it black to match with the scale itself. Okay, and so there it is, accuracy. Okay, so from zero to one, how accurate? How accurate were you? And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to chart design and click on axes titles and plop in the vertical axis. And here is um, uh, reaction time difference. And so this is difference in between two tasks. And then um, ms in parentheses because it it reflects milliseconds. That's why there are it, that's why it's in thousands. So I'm going to color this black because that's where I'm going to do what I've done on the other ones and I'm going to change that to 14. I'm going to hit enter because that's will make it bigger. I just realized there's a z in there. And I'm going to go ahead and do Arial and click over here and get rid of that Z. All right. So here we go. We have um, reaction time difference in milliseconds on this. We have accuracy on this. We have the horizontal line starting at zero. So we can see the dots for each individual pair of values, which I think is great. Now, if you double click on any of these, uh, the interesting thing is it will highlight uh, a few of them. Uh, don't worry, if it's in the same series, it is all of them. And we can change the marker if we want. So here it's automatic, but uh, and, and usually I think Excel for the first series will default to circles. Um, but you can go to built-in, and so you can see that it's the circle selected. But you can choose for it to be squares. You can see that all of them, even though only a few of them are actually highlighted when I double-click on them, all of them are squares. Now, uh, if you don't increase their size, so I can increase their size, the more you increase their size, the more the values, them individual values themselves, blend together. So I would not recommend this if you have a lot of data points like I do in this scatter plot. But I would recommend that you would make them, you know, reasonable. Five, I think, is a good one. And circles tend to give, especially if they're in lines like this, in vertical uh, clusters, uh, helps you differentiate that there are a lot of points that might be close together 
in certain places. So that would be my, my suggestion. You can change their color if you want to. So these are automatically filled, but you can do solid gradient picture patterns, and you can change the color here. So um, we can make them gr this ugly green or um, this bright green, although, you know, it doesn't really... <laughs> doesn't really show up when they're this small but in any case you can do that if you'd like now additional things that you can do you can add in a line of best fit and how you add in a line of best fit uh, I still want to be in chart elements and so if I wanted to add a trend line like a linear regression line I'm gonna go ahead to trend line linear and then it's gonna plop in this line here you can see that the default and it's kind of gross and you're going to want to change that so um, here we are going to the paint bucket and we are going to change the kind of line it is and so we're going to change the dash type and it's going to be a solid line far better far better now the that's the line type. That's the dash type. Now you can add in, depending on how big you want your width to be. So this is 1.5. If I increase this, you can see the line gets thicker. Um, now, if you want the line to be the thing that people are focused on when they look at this graph, you, you want that to be the thicker line. And you can change the uh, end point as soon as I click off the plot area uh, endpoints you can see what what's the difference between cap type and join join type you could also have arrows um, I would not suggest arrows on a line of best fit uh, you could also change the color here and how transparent it is depending on again what you want um, people to be looking at when they look at the scatter plot and if I go over here there is one other there is one other uh, great addition that you can set on your best fit line here and that is to display the r squared uh, on the graph now in this particular uh in this particular case it decided to hide behind the line but r squared here um will give you a value you can make that bigger if you want to um, i'm going to go ahead and do that as we have been doing on on everything else i'm going to make it aerial as well and i'm going to make it black and this will tell the reader, uh, the the viewer of the um, line, that this is the variance share, so 0.02 of this. And now, if you take the take the square root of this, it will tell you what the correlation value is uh, of these two two variables in this particular set of data. It's not a very strong correlation, as you can see. The slope is fairly horizontal and that r squared is not very big which means that r is also not going to be very big so that is an apa style scatter plot please leave your comments suggestions and feedback down below uh, please like and subscribe if that's something you want to do if you want to see more tutorial videos in apa and excel Jamovi, Jasp, other psych-related science streams. Thanks for watching.